In this hypothetical scenario, a Chinese fighter jet, such as the J-15 or J-20, attempts to land on a U.S. aircraft carrier like the USS Ronald Reagan. This could happen due to various reasons, such as a defecting pilot, a navigational error, or deliberate provocation. Number one, U.S. carrier's immediate response. U.S. aircraft carriers are equipped with advanced detection and communication systems designed to handle potential threats like an approaching unidentified aircraft. The detection process begins with the carrier's radar and surveillance systems, which continuously monitor the surrounding airspace. Upon detecting an incoming aircraft, the ship's air traffic controllers immediately attempt to establish radio contact, demanding the aircraft identify itself and explain its intentions. Should the Chinese jet fail to respond, the situation would escalate quickly. The carrier's combat air patrol, CAP units, consisting of armed fighter jets, would be launched to intercept the intruding aircraft. These KP fighters play a crucial role in defending the carrier from potential threats. Their first task would be to visually identify the aircraft and attempt to establish communication once again. If the intruder remains unresponsive or continues its approach, the KP fighters would employ non-lethal measures to deter the aircraft. This could include firing flares to signal the pilot or using electronic warfare techniques to jam the jet's communications and navigation systems. The objective here is to compel the intruder to change course without resorting to lethal force. However, if the aircraft continues to pose a threat, the situation could escalate to a higher level of engagement. The U.S. fighters are authorized to engage the intruder if it continues its approach and is deemed a direct threat to the carrier and its crew. This decision is not taken lightly and involves a series of protocols to ensure that lethal force is used only as a last resort. The decision-making process in such scenarios involves multiple layers of command and control. The carrier's commanding officer, in consultation with higher headquarters, would assess the threat level and determine the appropriate response. This chain of command ensures that all actions are coordinated and aligned with broader strategic objectives. In the event of an engagement, the KP fighters are equipped with a variety of weapons to neutralize the threat. This includes air-to-air -air missiles designed to intercept and destroy enemy aircraft. The rules of engagement, ROE, governing the use of force are strict and designed to minimize collateral damage while ensuring the safety of the carrier and its crew. Beyond the immediate response, the incident would trigger a series of follow-up actions. The carrier's crew would conduct a thorough assessment of the situation, including gathering intelligence on the intruding aircraft's origins and intentions. This intelligence would be shared with allied forces and relevant agencies to build a comprehensive picture of the threat environment. The incident would also prompt a review of the carrier's defensive posture and readiness levels. This could involve adjusting patrol patterns, enhancing surveillance capabilities, and conducting additional training exercises to ensure the crew is prepared for similar threats in the future. From a strategic perspective, such an incident could have significant geopolitical implications. It would likely lead to heightened tensions between the U.S. and China, with both sides engaging in diplomatic efforts to de-escalate the situation. The incident could also influence military planning and force posture in the region, with potential adjustments to deployment patterns and engagement strategies. Number 2. Strategic and Political Implications A Chinese fighter jet attempting to land on a U.S. aircraft carrier would immediately create a diplomatic firestorm. Both countries would likely initiate high-level diplomatic talks to manage the fallout. The U.S. would demand a thorough explanation from China and assurances that such provocations will not recur. China's response would hinge on its strategic objectives and the nature of the incident. If viewed as a navigational error, China might offer an apology, albeit a guarded one, to avoid escalating tensions. However, if seen as a deliberate act, China might adopt a more defensive stance, complicating diplomatic efforts. International organizations like the United Nations and alliances such as NATO would likely become involved. The incident could prompt emergency meetings to address the potential threat to international security and stability. Allied nations, particularly those in the Asia-Pacific region, might express solidarity with the U.S., increasing diplomatic pressure on China. This collective response could amplify the incident's geopolitical ramifications, potentially leading to sanctions or other diplomatic measures against China. 
On the military front, the U.S. would likely respond by bolstering its naval presence in the region. Increased patrols and joint exercises with allies would serve as a show of strength and a deterrent against future incidents. The U.S. might also enhance its surveillance and intelligence gathering efforts to better monitor Chinese military activities. China, in turn, might respond by conducting more military drills, particularly those involving anti-ship ballistic missile tests. Such actions would serve to demonstrate its military capabilities and resolve. The People's Liberation Army Navy, PLAN, might increase its patrols around contested areas like the South China Sea, further straining relations with neighboring countries and the U.S. This scenario would likely accelerate the ongoing arms race between the two superpowers. Both nations would invest heavily in their naval and aerial capabilities. The U.S. might expedite the deployment of advanced aircraft carriers, stealth fighters, and anti-missile defense systems. China would likely accelerate the development and deployment of its own carriers, such as the Type 003, and other advanced naval assets, including stealthy J-20 fighter jets and anti-ship missiles. The strategic implications of such an incident extend beyond immediate military posturing. It could influence broader defense policies and alliances. Countries in the region might seek to strengthen their own military capabilities and alliances with the U.S., fearing increased Chinese aggression. Conversely, nations with close ties to China might face pressure to distance themselves from Beijing's aggressive maneuvers, leading to shifts in regional alliances and power dynamics. Number three, recent incidents and tensions. Recent incidents and rising tensions between the U.S. and China have highlighted the precarious nature of their military interactions, especially in the South China Sea. Instances of near collisions and close encounters between Chinese fighter jets and U.S. military aircraft have become alarmingly frequent, illustrating the high-risk environment in which these forces operate. For example, a Chinese J-11 fighter jet came within 10 feet of a U.S. B-52 bomber, showcasing the perilous proximity and potential for miscalculation during these encounters. Aerotime. Such close encounters not only underscore the existing tensions, but also the potential for accidental or intentional escalations. These incidents are symptomatic of the broader strategic rivalry between the two nations, where each side seeks to assert its dominance in a contested region. The frequent near-miss events highlight the thin margin for error and the constant risk of an unintended conflict arising from a misjudgment or technical failure. Both nations are rapidly advancing their naval and aerial capabilities, intensifying this dynamic. China is significantly expanding its fleet of aircraft carriers, with the Liaoning and the newly built Shandong already in operation and more under construction. Alongside these carriers, China is enhancing its carrier-based fighter jet capabilities with aircraft like the J-15 and the newer stealthy J-31. These developments enable the People's Liberation Army Navy, PLAN, to project power far beyond its traditional boundaries, posing a direct challenge to U.S. naval supremacy in the region. On the other side, the U.S. maintains a robust presence in the Asia-Pacific region, continually upgrading its naval assets. The deployment of advanced carriers like the USS Gerald R. Ford and the integration of F-35 fighter jets onto its decks underscore the U.S.'s commitment to maintaining its strategic advantage. These carriers, equipped with state-of-the-art technology and formidable firepower, serve as floating fortresses capable of responding to various threats and asserting U.S. naval dominance. The military advancements are not limited to hardware alone. Both countries are investing heavily in training and readiness to ensure their personnel can operate effectively in high-pressure environments. The U.S. Navy conducts regular exercises and patrols with its allies in the region, fostering interoperability and readiness. Similarly, China conducts extensive drills and tests, including anti-ship ballistic missile tests, to demonstrate and enhance its capabilities. The strategic competition extends to cyberspace and electronic warfare, where both nations are developing sophisticated technologies to gain an edge. Electronic warfare capabilities can disrupt communications, radar, and other critical systems, playing a crucial role in modern naval engagements. This technological race adds another layer of complexity to an already volatile situation, with each side striving to outdo the other.